the Cleveland Torso Murderer, also known as the Mad Butcher of Kingsbury Run, was an unidentified serial killer who killed and dismembered at least 12 victims in the Cleveland area in the 1930s. Murders The official number of murders attributed to the Cleveland Torso Murderer is 12. Although recent research has shown there are as many as 20, the 12 victims were killed between 1935 and 1938, but some, including lead Cleveland detective Peter Murillo, believe that there may have been 13 or more victims in the Cleveland, Pittsburgh, and Youngstown, Ohio, areas between the 1920s and 1950s. Two strong candidates for addition to the initial list of those killed are the unknown victim, nicknamed the Lady of the Lake, found on September 5, 1934, and Robert Robertson, found on July 22, 1950. The victims of the Cleveland Torso murderer were usually drifters whose identities were never determined, although there were a few exceptions. Victims Numbers Chapter 2, 3, and 8 were identified as Edward Andrassi, Florence Palillo, and possibly Rose Wallace, respectively. Invariably, all the victims, male and female, appeared to hail from the lower class of society. Easy prey in Depression-era Cleveland, many were known as working poor, who had nowhere else to live but the ramshackle shanty towns in the area known as the Cleveland Flats. The torso murderer always beheaded and often dismembered his victims, sometimes also cutting the torso in half. In many cases the cause of death was the decapitation or dismemberment itself. Most of the male victims were castrated, and some victims showed evidence of chemical treatment being applied to their bodies. Many of the victims were found after a considerable period of time following their deaths, sometimes a year or more. This made identification nearly impossible, especially since their heads were often not found. During the time of the official murders, Elliot Ness held the position of public safety director of Cleveland, a position with authority over the police department and ancillary services, including the fire department. Victims Most researchers consider there to be 12 definite victims, although new evidence suggests a woman dubbed the Lady of the Lake could be included. Only two victims were positively identified. The other ten were six John Does and four Jane Does. Andrassi was found lying about 30 feet from John Doe I. He had been decapitated and emasculated. His head was recovered. Male body was never identified. Emasculated and decapitated. Head recovered. The skin was treated with a chemical agent that caused it to become reddish and leathery. The victim was dismembered while still alive. His head was recovered. This unidentified male body was the only known West Side victim. Only half the torso was found. Nothing remained below the hips. The head was never found or the body identified. The unidentified female body was found at the same spot as the 1934 non-canonical victim nicknamed the Lady of the Lake. See below. The head was never found. On April 8th only the victim's lower leg was recovered. On May 2nd a human thigh was discovered floating in the river to the east of the West 3rd Street Bridge. A police search under the bridge found a burlap sack containing the victim's headless torso cut in to halves, another thigh and a left foot. The head and the rest of the body were never found, only victim to have drugs in her system. Discovered at the same time as Jane Doix. Male decapitated body. Head was found in a can. Victim never identified. Carrot. Question mark. The victim, who was estimated to be in his mid-twenties, had six unusual tattoos on his body. One included the names Helen and Paul, and another had the initials W. C. G. His undershorts bore a laundry mark indicating the owner's initials were J. D. Despite Morgan death mask inspections by thousands of Cleveland citizens in the summer of 1936, at the Great Lakes Exposition, the victim known as the Tattooed Man was never identified. Carrot. 
victim was possibly Rose Wallace, question mark. Dental work was considered a close match by police and her son, who said he was certain that the victim was his mother. Exact identification could not be achieved because the dentist who carried out the work had died. Years before, doubts remained, because the body was estimated to have been dead for a year whereas Wallace had only been missing for 10 months. Possible Victims Several non-canonical victims are commonly discussed in connection with the Torso Murderer. The first was nicknamed the Lady of the Lake and was found near Euclid Beach on the Lake Erie shore on September 5, 1934, at virtually the same spot as canonical victim number 7. Some researchers of the Torso Murderer's victims count the Lady of the Lake as victim number 1, or victim 0. The headless body of an unidentified male was found in a box car in Newcastle, Pennsylvania, on July 1, 1936. Three headless victims were found in box cars near Mickey's Rocks, Pennsylvania, on May 3, 1940. All bore similar injuries to those inflicted by the Cleveland killer. Dismembered bodies were also found in the swamps near Newcastle between the years 1921 and 1934, and between 1939 and 1942. In September 1940 an article in the Newcastle News refers to the killer as the murder swamp. Killer. The almost identical similarities between the victims in Newcastle to those in Cleveland, Ohio. Coupled with the similarities between Newcastle's murder swamp and Cleveland's Kingsbury Run, both of which were directly connected by a Baltimore and Ohio Railroad line, were enough to convince Cleveland detective Peter Murillo that the Newcastle murders were the work of the Mad Butcher of Kingsbury Run. Murillo was convinced the connection was the railroad that ran twice a day between the two cities. He often rode the rails undercover looking for clues to the killer's identity. On July 22, 1950, the body of 41-year-old Robert Robertson was found at a business at 2138 Davenport Avenue in Cleveland. Police believed he had been dead six to eight weeks and appeared to have been intentionally decapitated. His death appeared to fit the profile of other victims. He was estranged from his family had an arrest record and a drinking problem, and was on the fringes of society. Despite widespread newspaper coverage linking the murder to the crimes in the 1930s, detectives investigating Robertson's death treated it as an isolated crime. In 1939, the Torso Killer claimed to have killed a victim in Los Angeles, California. An investigation uncovered animal bones. Suspects on August 24, 1939, a Cleveland resident named Frank Dolezal, 52, was arrested as a suspect in Florence Palillo's murder. He later died under suspicious circumstances in the Cuyahoga County Jail. After his death it was discovered that he had suffered six broken ribs. Injuries his friends say he did not have when arrested by Sheriff Martin L. O'Donnell some six weeks prior. In 1997, another theory postulated that there may have been no single butcher of Kingsbury Run because the murders could have been committed by different people. This was based on the assumption that the autopsy results were inconclusive. First, Cuyahoga County Coroner Arthur J. Pierce may have been inconsistent in his analysis as to whether the cuts on the bodies were expert or slapdash. Second, his successor, Samuel Gerber, who began to enjoy press attention from his involvement in such cases as the Sam Shepard murder trial, garnered a reputation for sensational theories. Therefore, the only thing known for certain was that all the murder victims were dismembered. In popular culture, Butcher's Dozen is the second of four novels by Max Allen Collins fictionalizing Ness's tenure as Cleveland's public safety director, changing some names, and reordering some events for dramatic purposes. It concludes that, although Ness was unable to actually name the killer, a fictionalized version of Sweeney, publicly, 
He did identify him and made sure he was no longer a danger to the public. The novel was expanded from a short story, The Strawberry Teardrop, in which the main character is Collins's private eye hero, Nate Heller, and Ness plays a supporting role. John Payton Cook's 1993 novel, Torsos, noting that eight of the killer's 12, or 13, victims were men, suggests that there might have been a homosexual aspect to the series, and inserts a wholly fictional main character, a closeted gay Cleveland police detective, to investigate the murders. David Fincher planned to make a film about the murders after making a movie about another unidentified serial killer, known as the Zodiac Killer, a graphic novel entitled Torso, created by Brian Michael Bendis and Mark Andreco, became the source for the film. The adaptation was greenlit by Paramount Pictures in 2006. In 2015 Canadian band The Black River Drifters from Winnipeg, Manitoba released the single The Mad Butcher of Kingsbury Run from their album Hearts Gone Cold. Author William Bernhardt wrote a novel about the murders and Elliot Ness's involvement, titled Nemesis. The final case of Elliot Ness, although generally non-fiction, it was written as a novel, and makes some assumptions. The only significant deviation from the true story is the ending. A climax is fictionalized where Ness confirms the killer was Sweeney, and captures him, but is prevented from arresting him due to political pressure. It does try to remain factual to the case otherwise, while still remaining entertaining. NBC is currently in the works to adapt this book into a mini-series. No release date or cast has been announced as of January 2014. In the 2012 film Seven Psychopaths, the Cleveland Torso murderer, described as the Mad Butcher of Kingsbury Run, is one of the serial killers murdered by Zachariah Rigby and his accomplice. The Cleveland Torso murderer, referred to as the Mad Butcher of Kingsbury Run, was mentioned in episode 415 of Criminal Minds when a serial killer copying other serial killers, with each kill bases one of his murders after the aforementioned murderer. The murderer was also seen in a flashback in the same episode, in which he lured a victim. It was erroneously mentioned that the murderer lured his victims from gay bars before shooting, dismembering, and mutilating them. Also, Stephen Parkett who appeared in the season 10 premiere, was heavily based on the murderer, even having a nickname similar to the murderer's alternate nickname, the Mad Butcher of Bakersfield.